Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet everyone today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanking Him for what a great day and a great time and a great message uh, that we have in this day as we see time is uh, closing out and we're moving on uh, back to where we come from. So it's, um, it's really a great time to, uh, to be alive and to be able to witness uh, the very things that have been prophesied uh, at times of old. Uh, they, told, they told about it, they talked about it, it was written about it, the prophet come on the scene and he told us what to look for and uh, what he told us to look for is here. Amen. So everything is moving uh, right along and so if it's moving along, we got to move along with it and, and the way we do it, we just move as the Spirit leads us and guides us. We move with the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanking Him for what He has done and what He's doing and everything else. So uh, it's a good time. And so we want to take a little message this morning uh, that will maybe reflect some of these things. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you again. Lord, it's, it's good to be in your presence. It's good to know where you're standing uh, in the word of the hour, what God is doing. He's not a God of history. He's a God of right now. And he's continuing to unfold himself, to reveal himself to the people that are upon this earth, Lord. The ones that have been called, the ones that have been chosen, and we're here for a purpose, and Lord, that's what we intend to do. So we thank you for that. Pray that you'll be with us as we go into the message, and you'll give glory to yourself. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, today I want to take a little subject and to give this a title, I'm going to call it Time and Eternity Blended for a Season. And so, time and eternity has is, is been blended, it's been combined, and it's just going to happen for this season, and the season is here while we're on this earth. So, I want to read a scripture in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 18 to kind of give us a, a place so we can see where we're coming from. And it goes like this. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. And this goes in temporal this time because it's all got a time limit. So the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So here we are. We got a, we got a temporal, and we got an eternal. So, and we want to see how these two have become blended, have become combined, have become mixed for this little season of time here. So, I want to look at a statement that Brother Brown made in Wisdom, Wisdom versus Faith there in uh, Jeffersonville. And it goes like this. He said, one day it come down to a showdown. Wisdom and faith come to a showdown. Jesus and Satan met. That's right. Jesus and Satan met. The two great forces, wisdom and knowledge. Two great forces, wisdom and knowledge, came to a showdown. <clears throat> now, both of them use the word. And if you know where he's referring to, it's in Matthew chapter the, uh, the fourth chapter. He said, now, because Satan said, you know, it's written. And Jesus said, it's also written. So he said, both of them use the word. Isn't that right? Oh, brother, 
that this gets good to me. Don't miss it now. Oh, say, God opened my heart. God opened my heart. Both of them use the Word of God, the same Bible. And that reminds me today that we, the believers, we're using the Bible. And the, the denominations and the make-believers in earth, well, they're using the Bible. So we've come right down to the same thing again. So, they was both using the same Bible, but it won't work in an unconverted channel. What won't work? The Word, the Bible. It won't work, because why? It's, it's, it's knowledge, it's head knowledge. And that won't make it work. But he said, and it won't work in an unconverted channel. Well, how the, does the channel get converted? It gets converted by the new birth. You could become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Something happens inside you. He said, it sure won't. It certainly won't. Both of them used the Word of God, but Satan used it from a head knowledge, and so does his people. Because that's the only, only way they can use it, is through their knowledge. See? Head knowledge, and it didn't work. Well, we know it didn't work, because Jesus said, he said, you should worship the Lord thy God and Him only. And what happened? Satan departed. So let's go on in this wisdom versus faith. He said, then if Jesus defeated Satan upon the faith, knowing who he was, he was a predestinated creature. Jesus was a predestinated creature. He said, are you ready? What about the predestinated bride of Jesus Christ now? You believe the bride is predestinated? The, prede the predestinated bride of Christ now, the church, the word see, with everything that God promised to put in the church in it right now. It is in it now. Everything is in order. The Holy Spirit has been given. The seed has been sown. The evening lights are shining. The sign of Sodom that Jesus promised is here and Malachi for a predestinated church. How about that? Predestinated church. And Jesus was a predestinated creature. Amen? Now, let's look at that word to predestinate. It's to predetermine. To decide beforehand. And so this is what God done in his great mind as he was laying out all these things, just how he was going to do it. To predetermine, to decide beforehand in the New Testament of God, decreeing from eternity to foreordain a point beforehand. So he knows they're going to be there. There's not a shadow of a doubt of him because he's already foreordained it all the way before there was anything while yet in eternity. Now I want to move on to a little message called Revelation Book of Symbols. There, it was in 1956. And these things we're talking about, Brother Brown never changed his mind about them. He just gave us more information on them. <clears throat> he said, now, angelic beings associate together. Oh, I hope you get that. That just dropped right down three. In other what's he talking about? That did God just give him that as he's here speaking. Look. If you've got the Holy Ghost in you, then you're a candidate for association with the unseen world. Well, we just seen what the unseen what, what the unseen world was. It was the eternal, according to the Scripture, and the supernatural. 
No wonder people can't believe those things. They've never come in contact. They got nothing in here to believe with. He said, but when the Holy Spirit, well, the Holy Spirit is God, and God is eternal. But when the Holy Spirit comes into the heart, so here is this blending, because you're here, a time person, and here the eternal is coming into your heart. But when the Holy Spirit comes into the heart, Quickly, he becomes then a two-fold being. So he says, when this happened, you become, and he's going to explain what he means by the two-fold being. One of the earth to die, yes, that temporal part has got to go because it's just like he said to Adam, Adam, you come from the dust and you're going back to dust. Because why? Adam was a creation. He was a creature of time. One of the earth to die and one of heaven to live. Amen. In his body, he's still subject to death. But in his soul, he's passed from death unto life. In his body... He has his earthly contact with five senses. In his spirit, he has contact with God through the Holy Ghost. So, in his spirit, he's able to contact God, the eternal. Amen? And the angels of God visit them, speaks with them, and they are messengers sent from God to reveal. Well, hello. That's what we had this day. We had an angel of God sent was a messenger. The seventh church age messenger was ours. He was sent to us. What? To reveal and to bring messages from God to the individual. See, it, where is it coming? Not to a group. It's coming to an individual. And he's out to get the first thing first. You can't put the cupola on before the foundation is laid. See, we've got to remember that. Put first things first. And he gives the scripture there in Matthew 6, 30. 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So that's what we're seeking after. We're seeking, we're putting, God is always first. He's first in everything. He has that, 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 that supreme position. It's him. It's all about him. And we put on Facebook here a while back. We do the things we do because of the love of God constrains us to do it. Look at here. He done everything he did for us. He wasn't lost. We was the one that was lost. So everything he did, he did for us. And now the things we do, we do for him. It's just that simple. So, time and eternity is blended for a season. Now, in Hebrews uh, chapter 6, number 3, he makes this statement. Now, the only way that a church can be built, the only way that a man can have faith, is not, hit, not by his denomination, not by his affiliation, by his faith rests not upon theology or some man's ideas, because it's more or less altogether man. But, the only way faith can find its solemn resting place is upon the immovable, unchangeable Word of God. So if your faith is resting in something else other than the Word of God, look here, the Word is that solid rock. Everything else is sinking sand. Then he makes a statement. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word. So, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word. The word is the revealed word, 
brought by the Spirit. Amen? That's how it takes. And when faith is heard and accepted, it's forever settled. Nothing can no more ever move it, no matter what comes or goes. Nothing can ever change that faith. Think of that. You're anchored, and you can no more change for time and eternity. Look here, when you get anchored in Christ, when you get that new birth, when you become that new creature, there is nothing, there, there's nothing going to unchange you. You are unchangeable. You've been anchored in Christ. And it's settled for how long? For time and eternity. So in this, this time walk while we're here, nothing's going to move it. And it just goes back to the eternal where it came from. He said, you're anchored forever for, for God by one sacrifice has perfected forever those that are sanctified are called. Amen? So, by one sacrifice, look here, all the, the, the blood of bulls and goats and whatever more could never make a man perfect. But by this one sacrifice, God himself has forever perfected. Now, this is Hebrews chapter 7, number 1. And it's Christ that God looks at. Now, this is very important because some people are looking at themselves. And we don't want to look at him. We want to look at who, who done these things for us. And it's Christ that God looks at, not you. It's Christ. So if there's no fault in him, how can there be fault? How can he find fault when you are dead and your life is hid in Christ through God, sealed by the Holy Ghost? They that are born of God does not commit sin. Now he's right back into the Bible again. Over there in 1 John. So they that are born of God do not commit sin, for he cannot sin. How can he sin when a perfect sacrifice is laying in his place? God never looks at me. He looks at Christ because we're in Christ. So there's no way. There's no sin. Amen. Sin. What is sin? It's unbelief. And people think, oh, well, they made a mistake. Well, you might have stumbled and fell. But look here. Did you lay there? No, you got up. Was it on purpose? No. And some people look at the wrong things, and that's what Satan will point you to. He'll point you to any little thing trying to mess up the walk. But don't believe him. Always believe Christ. Now, if I love Christ and I live with him, he would never brought me unless he knew if God saved me today and knowing he was going to lose me six weeks from the day, he's defeating his own purpose. Well, look here, that don't sound like no eternal. That don't sound like some kind of a predestinate. Right. He don't even know the future then. If he saved me knowing he, what's he saved me for knowing that he's going to lose me? God doesn't do things. He said then... It takes it back in two weeks to keep his promise. When he saves you, it's for time and eternity. I remember way back when I got into the, uh, started off in the, in the Baptist church. Uh, I, did, I, I really didn't know anything about the Bible. I started reading it and some of the things I thought I could understand, some of them I just didn't, didn't understand it. And one night I was at church and they was talking about eternal security. I didn't have a, I didn't have a clue what they was even talking about. It. And look here, I don't, want, I don't want no Baptist eternal security. 
I want Christ eternal security. The real thing, when you become born again and become born by the Word of God, you are the Word, you believe the Word, you live the Word. What the Word says is what you do. That's real security. That's real eternal security because now the eternal is in you and you are in it. You're part of it. So he said, when this happens, you're saved for time and eternity. Now, let's move on. This is a little subject here called the message called, How Can I Overcome? And when I read this, this statement or this quote the other day, this is what kind of got me to thinking about this. Because Brother Random here, he's starting off in this message and he's, He's, he's praying this prayer. He said, Bless every minister today, everywhere, the servants that standing for this thy truth. So <laughs> bless the ministers that standing for the word. Amen. Answer their prayers for the sick and heal sick bodies of those that are suffering. Lord, we would ask you that. You go out amongst the people and seek out that predestinated seed. Now, that's the only ones that God can save. Is that predestinated ones that He's predestinated before the foundation of the world. He never come to save the devil's children and people can't understand that. So He's praying, He said, among the people, seek out that predestinated seed out there and Lord, bring it around in some way that the light will fall across the path, Lord, for we believe that the hour is getting late. Now remember, this is 1963. Well, we're over here in 2024 and some people have never come to the realization even what happened, what God sent and what God done and what was the Word all about. For we believe that the hour is getting late. The sun is swiftly sinking in the west. Then will soon be that time shall be no more. Time and eternity will blend together when God and His people blends together. So how does time and eternity blend? When God and His people blend together. Well, we're going to see how that happens. Amen? Because it's absolutely, that's when time and eternity blends. When God and His people blend together. And we pray, God, that time, that we will be numbered among those that's blended into Christ. How about that? Blended into Christ. Combined with Christ. Become part of Him. And Him become part of us. Be one. Amen. That's called his bride. Well, then when he comes on later on, he said that she is him. She who? The bride, the wife, she's him. You're talking about a blending from time to eternity. Become that eternal one, him, God himself. He says, help us today as we prepare, not knowing what tomorrow will hold. Well, look here, we don't know what tomorrow will hold here, but we know who holds it. So what do we do? We march on with our heads held high, knowing that God's got everything under control. And we're ready to receive anything, Lord, as far as we know, that Thou has for us. We're ready to receive it. We ask these blessings for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I believe the prayer still holds for today. Bless the ministers that have the truth, that are scattering the evening light, that it could fall across the path of a predestinated seed. You say, well, you think there's... I don't know. But he told us to go and prophesy again. And so that's all we have to do is do what he said. We don't have to figure it out. We don't, well, well, why, why? No, no, why, why? Just go do. 
That's what our part was. John, our type, eat the book. The little book that was open in Revelations 10.1. And when he ate, he said, you must prophesy again. Well, here we are, 2024, still prophesying. Well, what are we going to prophesy? The thing that was in the book, the thing that was open, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, time and eternity blended for a season. Now, we're going to see here, if this is what I'm thinking about, we're going to see here just exactly when time and eternity met. And this is in a little message called the paradox. You know, these people that sit in these churches and they thought they were just hearing an evangelistic message and they come to maybe see the discernment walk, to see the discernment work, or maybe get their bodies healed. They just didn't realize what kind of a message that they were really sitting under. Because it was God's message of the hour that they were listening to. And so, in this little paradox message, he makes this statement. Now, it was a paradox when God caused a woman to conceive. Amen? He said that he would be born by a virgin. He would come by a virgin birth caused a woman to conceive it was a paradox that how God the eternal that fills all time and eternity could come down and become now listen the eternal God that could come down and become a little baby crying in a manger how about that Started at the not he didn't come and come to the to the high priest and said hey you know I, I'm the Messiah I have arrived no how did he come he come a little baby crying in a manger that was a paradox boy well, he told us what a paradox was it was something true but it was unbelievable amen it was true. And that's why they couldn't believe it, because it was a paradox. Oh, you mean tell me that the eternal God has come down and has squeezed himself into one little blood cell and come into that woman, and now he's, he's born himself a body? It was just too much for him. Well, it's too much for them in the day. They can't handle that. As some fellow says, they can't wrap their arms around that. It's just too much. It is a paradox. Now listen. So what happened when this here eternal God come down and was born a little baby in a manger? What happened? That was time and eternity come together. Right there. The eternal God come into and he become a human being. And a human had a time that he started back in Genesis. It was a paradox when he died at the cross. That was a paradox to think that God would come human and see God. He said that was a paradox to think that eternal God would have to come human. So he could die as a human. See, all of these things fall right into the way God has worked this out for the foundation of the world. It said that Jesus Christ was crucified before the foundation of the world and our name was put on the Lamb's book of life. How about that? You talk about eternal security? You talking about eternal because we were back in the eternal but now we've dropped down here in this little time slot what the scripture called temporal that God would come human so he could die as a human well why 
because he had to pay the price. Every other human was born in sin because of the fall. And one sinner can't save another. Is that right? Amen. So now, to redeem his own creation, he had to do that. So, that puts God where he becomes one of us. He became me that I could become him the way back. So he done all these things to redeem his creation. He had to do that. Nobody else, if it was anybody else beside God, see, then if it was anybody else beside God, we're lost. Because we know it was him, because the Bible said it was him. Jesus said it was him. And God could not take a human's place, being he is the spirit. So God created a blood cell, which was his own son, Jesus Christ, and came and lived in there, and lived and identified himself in Christ. That was God Emmanuel. Is that what the Bible said? That he would be Emmanuel, God with us? These things all tie in because that's what the whole message is about. It's about the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's about the scripture becoming real, not just something you read or something you thought about or something you had some, you remember, you memorized something. No, it has to become part of you. That was God, Emmanuel. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. My Father dwells in me. See, God in Christ reconciling the world. Now listen, this here is the whole key. Time and eternity. Jesus was the body, the tabernacle. Talking about Jesus, the man. He was the body, the tabernacle. He was the one that could give his life. And he had blood, and his blood was the blood of God. So Jesus was the body, the tabernacle. God was the spirit that lived in him. This is when time and eternity blended together for a season. And it didn't stop there. Because Jesus said, A little while and the world seeth me no more. But you shall see me, for I'll be with you even in you. And on the day of Pentecost, that great eternal spirit, the one that was in Jesus Christ had come into that bunch of believers that was up there in the upper room and here time and eternity had blended again. God was in that bunch of people and they proved that God was there. Amen. But could they prove it to the rest of the world? No. Who could they prove it to? They could only prove it to the believers. The rest of them thought they had lost their mind. They thought when they come out of there, they was all they had put up there and got drunk. Uh -huh. And they still think the same thing today. And there was mockers and scoffers, and they still are today. What? About Jesus Christ being the truth. About Jesus Christ being here. About Jesus Christ being in him and in his body, his people. Time and eternity had blended. But not to them. No, it'll never be for them because they don't have no part of eternity. All they have a part of is the temporal. Mm, amen. Now, let's move on. Here in this, who is this Melchizedek? Brother Brown makes a statement. Praise God for the opening seals. And amen, I praise God too because that's when he took the lid off the Bible. That's when he took the veil off the Bible. And that's when it became an open book. Amen? It's my prayer to know these things. Now, 
The true revelation of Melchizedek comes into view. What? He was God the Word. You know all about Melchizedek over there in Hebrews 7. So, he said exactly who he was. He was God the Word before he became flesh. God the Word, because he had to be no one else could be immortal like him. Who? This Melchizedek. See, I had mother and father. You did too. Jesus had mother and had father and mother. But this man had no father, had no mother. Because it said, the Bible said, he had no beginning of days or ending of life. So whoever he was, he was eternal. So that means he's still around. Now listen, because Jesus, the man, the one that was born there in the manger, Jesus had a time he started. Well, if he had a time he started, the man had a time that he would end. Because that was not eternal. The eternal was on the inside. And that's why the people, they can't seem to even get that separated. As simple as that should be. Jesus had a time he started. This man, this man who, Melchizedek, didn't. Jesus gave his life and he did on Calvary's cross. This man couldn't because he was life. And that's the whole story that he had to become a man to give the man life, not the God life. And that's what was give up. Because he was life. And it's the same self man all the time. I hope God reveals it to you. The same self person all the time. Because what did it say? God was in Christ. And here we are. We know that Abraham met Melchizedek. He had, had communion with him, bread and wine, and give him a tenth part of all the spoils and everything. And the Bible said he was a M A N man. But if he was, he was the eternal man. And the people, they can't handle that either. But see, all of these things, as we just read, all of these things won't work in an unconverted channel. You have to become that twofold, that twofold creature that you start here, you're one of the earth to die, and then you become one of heaven. You became that, you become back to that eternal again. Redeemed. Amen. Now. I got some statements here out of the, the future home where Brother Brown, he talked about going into this eighth day. And so let's just pick it up because we're still talking about time and eternity blended for a season. Now, future home, he said, seven days, watch, which pass away, or I have said, change to another. Eight days deals with new creation. Well, if eight days deals with new creation, what happened to you when you become that new creation? Over there in 2 Corinthians 5.17. So eight days deals with new creation. See, not old. Eight days is new creation. For it was on the eighth day that our Lord raised from the dead. There is your other convocation, the holiness not considering all the Sabbaths at all. Well, some people, that's all the hope they got, that they go to church on the Sabbath. There's a church right down the road from here, and you pass on Saturday, and the lot is full of people because that's what they believe. They believe that's the seal of the Holy Ghost, going to the church on Saturday. My, 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 how about that? Is you think that's carnal? Yes, I would say so. But see, not considering the Sabbath at all, or the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of this, or the Feast of Pentecost. Look here, we're not considering nothing but Jesus Christ. Amen? 
He's the one that paid the price and he's the one that called us and he's the one that baptized us. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ plus nothing. Jesus raised from the dead <clears throat> for our justification on the eighth day. Now listen, after seven Sabbaths or seven days or seven church ages, seven church ages, Jesus raised from the dead. That's when the Word was coming back. The Word, the full Word, not a piece or a part, but the full revelation of Jesus Christ. So, seven church ages, Jesus is raised from the dead. The eighth day, which is a holy convocation. Convocation, all it means, it's a gathering. See, which is the first day. See, you've done pass through time. Uh-oh. You've done pass through time and dropped into eternity again. See, when this happens, this is the very plan of God. And he had a plan, and there's nothing going to thwart the plan. It's going to be had. It's going to be. I don't care how many devils, how many false prophets, how many, many, many. It don't make any difference. So you dropped into eternity again. Not keeping of days and keeping of Sabbaths and new, new moons and things like that, but has passed, changed your form, not annihilated glory, but passed from death unto eternal life. Pass from death temporal because the temporal has to, has to go away. The temporal has to die. The temporal is mortal. Pass from death unto eternal life. Oh, what the Bible does teach. See, pass from one to another. And we live through all these types in here. Oh, my. Well, how about the people? They're still looking for all these things. He said, we live through all these times, but when you hit the eighth, you go into eternity. You don't come by laws, rituals, and orders. You come by predestination. Hello. We just read the definition. It's what God done before he ever started out. He could predetermine have it all worked out and bring it to pass by foreordaining it. So you come by predestination. There is a genuine holy convocation and we're ending the seventh church age, 1964. We're ending the seventh church age. And we've got people that believe the seventh church age is still going on and on and on. Well, that kind of shows you where they're at. It shows you where they, they think the Word is at. There's no revelation. Nothing there. Because if they're there, Jesus, according to what the Bible said, was on the outside. Huh. So, he said, we're ending the seven church age, the church age, the Pentecostal age. So look here, if you're still there, you're in the Pentecostal age. Well, there's a bunch of them there. Do you see it? We're entering into that holy convocation. We're entering into that real, genuine eternity where the church is called, not to some station, some denomination, but into eternity with their eternal king. See, we don't have it at all. There's no such thing as days and things and times. You passed into eternity. You passed into eternity where you come from. How about that? You could go back because that's where you come from. You was there to begin with, see? Well, not everybody was there. A lot of people, the only reason they're here is because of sex. The very thing that Satan used in the beginning to build him a family with. Now, let's move on. Now, in Ephesians 1.10, it's called, if you're putting it down, Ephesians 1.10, it's called not a dispensation, not a seventh day. It's called the fullness of time. And when the fullness of time has come, that's when time has been 
full field. When there is no more time, then you go into eternity. After the seven church age is over, and it is, after the seven church age is over, and it is, Luther's age is over, Methodist age, Pentecost age is over. Now, you go into what? Eternity. And why would anybody fight, fight with that? And they'd be, oh, no, no, no. No, what, what, what? I know, I'll tell you why. Because they never come from there. They don't know nothing about these things. You go into what? Eternity. No more sevens, no more threes, no more. They're in eternity where there is no such thing as times and unders and things. Amen. You see it now. Amen, Brother Brandon. The real true believer sees it. The, the wife of Jesus Christ not only sees it, she is it. Amen. Future home. Now, this really got, <clears throat> kind of spoke to me. It says, see old man and old woman. Hello, old man. See old man, old woman. Don't be discouraged. He said, if you, if you are a representation up here, remember, he was drawn on the blackboard. And we know what that represents. It's representation of predestination. Back up there in the mind of God, see? So, if you got representation up here in this attribute of God, this, if God had it, you're represented here. You cannot. You're in the eternal. You're in the eternal. And if you've crossed from the seventh day into the eighth, you've, you've got into <laughs> eternal by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And there's that twofold being again because that's how you become that twofold being by the Holy Ghost. So you're included in this. Now, if you're just trusting upon a sensation or jumping up and down or I do this, I keep my seventh day, I don't eat meat and these things that you're going to perish anyhow, see? But this is the eternal this is eternal, the feast after the Feast of the Tabernacles. The Feast of the Tabernacles was the last feast, the seventh day. And we're worshiping now on the Feast of the, the Seventh Church Age. See? So, you got to be up there to get back up there. And there, everybody won't be there. Because just the ones that he foreknew before the foundation of the world. Now, I want to close with this statement here. This kind of sums up the whole thing up. That's just not a, this is not the future home. That's just not a story, that's the truth. That's what God said, that's what he promised. That's what the bride goes to. Even the desert, he said, shall blossom, be a rose. Satan and sin and sinners has all gone forever. It's all done, blended into eternity. And all that was perverted, the great archangel that sat there one day, Satan, that did all this evil will be destroyed. You remember the Bible said, if that soul won't do as he said do, he will even destroy that soul. But you see, he can't destroy himself and remain God. So if that soul is of the world, it has to be destroyed. But if it's eternal with God, it never did begin because it's part of God and can never be destroyed. Amen. What a beautiful, how thankful that the church ought to be to see that. Amen. Because we know all of this temple, everything that come here temple is going to one day have to go away because it's, it's on a time frame. It had a beginning. It has an end. <clears throat> but there's that eternal part. 
that never has a, had a beginning and never has an end. But right now, we're here. This outside is temporal. The inside is eternal. And it's blended together so God could work through it during this little bit of time to make himself known, to be able to, to live through the people, to live out his life through the people, to be able to preach and to expound the word and give the people hope of what's going on, to give them the revelation of Jesus Christ. So all things work together for good that them are the called and love God. So don't worry. Let's keep on moving. Let's move on. Let's move on with the word, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And God will work it all out. There's no doubt in my mind. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Lord, we're so glad to be a part of this eternal. Lord, and to know that you chose us and foreordained us before the foundation of the world. Lord, that we come here, we come here the wrong way, but Lord, you've taken care of all of that by way of the new birth, by Christ coming and living in us and making us that new creature, Lord. And so we can never, never, never be lost. We're always one with you, and it's all about Christ from hereafter, Lord. So we give you all the praise, the honor, the glory. We love you. Lord, you proved your love for us. Let us prove our love for you by living a life that's worthy of the gospel, by being a believer in what you've done this day. We give you the praise and love you in Jesus' name. Amen.